गेट रेडी टेन सेकेंड्स फाइव सेकेंड्स स्टार्ट वेन द हाउस रोज लास्ट इवनिंग आई वॉज इन द मिस्ट ऑफ एन आर्ग्यूमेंट कंसर्निंग द प्रायोरिटी ऑफ एग्जेमटिंग गवर्नमेंट कंपनीज फ्रॉम द प्रोविजन्स ऑफ कंपनी लॉ आई विश टू मेक इट क्लियर दैट वेयर गवर्नमेंट ओन्स हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑफ द शेयर्स इन ए कंपनी ऑब्वियसली मैनी ऑफ द रूल्स एप्लीकेबल टू ऑर्डिनरी कंपनीज कैन नॉट बी अप्लाइड इंडीड द वेल नोन अथॉरिटी ऑन मॉडर्न कंपनी लॉ समराइज द पोजिशन दस इट विल बी एप्रिशिएटेड दैट द एबसेंस ऑफ शेयर्स एंड शेयर होल्डर्स ऑटोमेटिकली रेंडर्स लार्ज एंड इम्पॉर्टेंट ब्रांचेस ऑफ कंपनी लॉ टोटली इनएप्लीकेबल रूल्स रिलेटिंग टू द रेजिंग एंड मेंटेनेंस of share capital the control of directors by members protection of minority shareholders company meetings and the like can have no relevance as we have said earlier the naughty problem of the relationship between the management and the members is solved by the abolition of the latter but the approach of our joint committee to this problem is difficult to appreciate government companies are put in a peculiarly privileged position last night i happened to pursue the minutes of the 14th meeting of the joint committee which considered this question the recommendations submitted by the finance ministry miss the point there have been exemptions suggested for certain types of companies but i do not think that any purpose will be served by having any of the government companies other than those in which government has 100% shares brought within the purview of the exemption clause at all we have to bear in mind that a government company in which 51% of the shares are held by the government is not a company which is the exclusive property of the government it is one in which the government has a technical majority holding of the shares and theory the government according to the provisions of the bill is given powers to revoke all the safeguards provided in the company's bill let me read out briefly the particular section which covers these exemptions i want to ask only a few questions of those who have taken a prominent part in the deliberations 
of the joint committee what is it that you seek to achieve by granting such an exemption the government can if it deems necessary cheerfully decide one fine morning to exceed the overall limit of managerial remuneration laid down in clause 190 of course such a dispensation will be said to be in the national interest and we would then have to reconcile ourselves to this change under clause 234 government has to entertain complaints from shareholders but exemption from this provision can be made government companies after all are run by people of virtue how can we ever entertain any complaint against government directors indeed the blanket power that has been given confers on the executive full and complete authority to dispense with any or all the provisions of the companies act except two provisions to which specific reference is made of course the argument would be put forward that government would not be unreasonable that it will not exercise these powers i fail to understand the validity of this argument if you do not choose to exercise these powers then why should parliament give these powers to people who might not use them at some future date after all a statute is in existence until it is amended and at any moment changes can occur some day a rash finance minister might come to this house and dispense with all these elaborate safeguards which are meant to protect the interests of shareholders i think it is morally unjust and constitutionally improper to confer these blanket powers on government have the legal consequences of such powers being given been examined i have grave doubts whether this particular provision is in conformity with article 14 of our constitution we have after all a written constitution which assures equal protection under law on what grounds a legality can be distinguished between shareholders in a government company and shareholders in a private company i believe the courts would have something to say on this classification of categories which has been attempted by the joint committee how can we strip them of their rights the shareholders have already been stripped of their virtues by the government which does not trust them and now we are called upon to deprive them of their rights in government companies even in a corporation state corporation although it is true that shareholders have limited rights where an infringement of the statutory powers by the corporation 
occurs or where there is an infringement of their rights the aggrieved individuals have a right to go to courts of law under this peculiar provision if it is held to be valid it will mean that the government if it so minded can deprive shareholders of all their rights it is in the fitness of things that the shareholders should be given a fair deal in future